You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may... 
It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolf.com. Hello, America. This is Rick Robinson. You're about 60 seconds away from the beginning of the America Off the Rails program right here live on KLRNRadio.com. For those of you who have not been paying attention to Twitter, what is the matter with you? That's right, folks. We have a very special guest tonight. Some of you from the Oklahoma City area will recognize the name Jason Doyle. He's going to be on with me for as long as he wants to hang out up to and including the full hour. Um, and then, of course, after this program, we will have the conservative curmudgeon radio show, followed by Jesse's POV. And, of course, closing out the night with our live programming will be the Stafford Voice with Daniel Stafford. We'll be back to kick off the beginning of the America Off the Rail show here in just about 60 seconds. Don't go away. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host. Favorite host. Favorite host. You know this freedom. stand together there's nothing that we can achieve this nation of people standing as one in the name of liberty hello america welcome to the program i am rick robinson we are live right now on klrnradio.com where liberty and reason still reign we do this thing Usually every Tuesday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Unfortunately, I was under the weather yesterday, so you guys got a best of. But we're making up for it tonight. We have a guest with us tonight, which I don't do that often, but this one was definitely worth it. Um, we actually will have Jason Doyle on with us. For as long as he wants to be, our soundboard is being a little cranky, so I'm trying to get that in there. Um, and, of course, we have a lot of things we could talk about tonight, but you know what? You know what I usually do? When we have a guest on, I turn the mic over to them, and some of you may not even necessarily know who he is. He's actually, um, and I'll give him a chance to talk and give you his full pedigree, but let's just say he's actually one of the first official journalists that I can say has ever been on the show. Because that's right, he's actually done the journalism thing. Um, and he's also been a radio talk show host and done TV broadcasting and about a million other things, including running the McCarver Report, which was actually founded by a mutual friend um and we will be back with him here in just a second but before we do that of course we've got to get the first official break out of the way but before that you got to put up with me talking for at least a minute or so um and i do have to say one of the things that i did want to talk about tonight that will only take about a minute is um up chucky schumer and the guy who basically put the country through hell for a weekend to try to prove a point that it wasn't his fault that the government shut down when apparently he's not very good at basic math because there was a 60-volt threshold that had to be met for this uh, spending 
uh, resolution to move forward, and we didn't have enough votes with ours behind their name, so it wasn't able to happen. So he went on all the, the talking head places and tried to blame Trump and said it was all his fault, when the simple fact of the matter is there's enough blame to go around for everybody when it comes right down to it. But at the end of the day, the House passed theirs. The Senate did not pass theirs. And he was the major blocking point as to why that didn't happen. And that, in my opinion, is why we had a government restart on Monday, because he wasn't able to push it off as the Trump shutdown. And now he has people from his own party talking about the fact that we need to stop making this a, a situation where the minority leader and the majority leader get to have all the say as to what goes to the floor. Um, that's actually coming from folks in his own party that um, are in states where Donald Trump won handily, and now they're looking at their re-election chances and watching them dwindle because this guy keeps trying to put illegal aliens in front of American citizens. But that's enough of my opinions for a moment. This is the America Off the Rail Show. We'll be back here in just about a minute with my guest, Jason Doyle, formerly with KOKC Radio and um, KTOK, and he'll actually be with us talking about a project that he has that he's about to kick off, and we want to give him the floor. So we will be back here in just about a minute. Sorry, I'm fighting with my soundboard, so I'm still trying to keep talking while I'm doing that. We'll be back in about 60 seconds. Don't go away. You're out here acting so tough, and now I'm calling your bluff. Black hoods in the faces. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All right, folks, welcome back. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. And without further ado, let's get the introduction out of the way. For those of you who aren't in Oklahoma City, uh, you, you may not have heard of this gentleman before, but he's actually um, – I've actually been a fan of his shows now that he's done for – well, I guess he's been in our markets now for a little over a year. Um, I actually listen to him on KTOK, and I have, I've actually said this to him before. I used to flip back and forth between he and Chad when they were on competing stations. So there for a while, I had the best of both worlds because they were both in the same place, and then my world came crashing down because he's no longer there. I've gotten to know Chad pretty well, though, so I still have a friend I feel in radio. And, of course, we have Jason Doyle with us today, who's going to start out by telling you a bit about himself, for those of you that may not have uh, heard of him before, and also a bit about what he has planned now that he is going to go out on his own and start his own thing in a podcast. So good afternoon and good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show today. You are more than welcome. Uh, so. I'll well, I just I, I want to say it's a great opportunity, and and uh, I'm really excited about this and all that. And I want to say thank you very much. Uh, I've actually been in Oklahoma, back in Oklahoma City uh, since 2002. We were back on the air in 2003 at KTOK as a reporter and anchor, and then I've been I had stints at KOCO TV, OETA, uh, uh, K, KTOK, uh, and uh, KOKC. Uh, which is my last stop uh, with Chad there, and was having a blast. And uh, but uh, management decided to go in a little different direction, which is what happens in this industry. And and but I actually, there's probably a few people out there that used to listen to KJ103 back in the day in Oklahoma City. I was back in the early '90s. I was and wondering. that's where I got my start in radio. Uh, and I played a character called Richie Cunningham on the morning show. Yeah, I was one of them. I remember you from back then. I had no idea it was you, but I remember once you mentioned that, I was like, I listened to you. <laughs> yeah, it's Danny and Stacy Barton, who's over at Magic One Hundred and Four, and Danny is actually uh, has his own show called Danny Land that he does online. It's a uh, it's an online show, 
he consults with other radio shows and things like that, and uh, he's on his way. He's, get this. After the hurricane, the big Florida hurricane, uh, he's leaving West Palm Beach and uh, heading back to Cleveland. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> wasn't, wasn't a fan of the hurricane. I guess I don't know if yeah, I would be either. It, there's there's a lot of reasons why you do, and I don't think it's just the hurricane. I think uh, it's also it's where he's from, and uh, getting to come back home because Oklahoma is my home, and I actually left the market for about ten years. I went off uh, back in 1994. Uh, to do radio in Kansas City and uh, had a blast doing all that and getting to grow up and get out of the entertainment side of things and go into news talk uh, type of things, become a journalist, uh, start knocking down some awards there and doing some really cool work there. Um, and then getting to come back home, which not a lot of people get to come back home and actually stay in their market for a while. I've been back since 2002 and uh, right now don't have any plans of leaving anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's one of the things that I see because for me, this was all kind of one of those things where it started as a hobby. So Internet gave me the ability to do something that I never thought I was going to get a chance to do because I'd I'd grow. I I started cutting my teeth on talk radio for Marshall Limbaugh, of course, because he was one of the biggest names out there, one of the pioneers of it. Um, And it's it's always been something that I always thought, you know, if I could get a chance to do that, I'd really, really love to do it. Um, And then Internet gave me the opportunity. So I've actually helped build a couple of different uh, kind of patterned after AM stations, uh, Internet based radio stations over the last uh, decade. Um, And, you know, it's one of those things where as I've gotten more and more kind of nose to the grindstone and gotten some ends with uh, media and radio, I've I've realized what a dysfunctional industry it actually is. So I'm kind of glad I'm over here. Because this way, I, I can't be fired. I'm part owner. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where you know I may not make a million dollars, and I may never make more than enough to pay for my airtime for the places that I syndicate at. But I still get to put out my content in the way that I want. And the only people that can really tell me that I can't are the people that that pay me to to run their ads. And they may not like something that I do, and they may decide to pull. But I have the freedom to go find others if they do that. And I the more yeah. I, the more I've gotten to know this, the more I like. I don't know. I've watched some of the things that you've gone through for the last year. I mean, I know you've been in this market a lot longer than even I realized, but I really kind of got to know you again when you first came on the scene back on KTOK. What was it? Just a little bit over a year ago, I think. Um, yeah, it was actually it was actually two years ago. Two years ago. Uh, the show the, we're about. Uh, let's see. We would have celebrated the uh, second year anniversary this year of the uh, that was the, the drive. Um, and it was actually a fantasy come true. When I was growing up, my dad loved KTOK and he was an aircraft mechanic and had to get up very, very early in the morning. But the part about living with an aircraft mechanic is that they are usually very hard of hearing. And so when his alarm would go off, it was the radio station and everybody heard what he was listening to, even though (laughs) he thought he was listening to things quietly. So that was my first real exposure to news talk was I was a kid and I just thought that's the way good adult radio is structured. This is the way people do things when they're adults and they play and act like DJs and play music and get all wacky when they're just kids like me. So I thought I was going to have to earn my stripes and started on the entertainment side of things. But I've always wanted to be one of those talk show hosts my dad listened to on KTOK. Uh, and unfortunately, he passed away before I got to have that opportunity to be a full-time talk show host. He did get to hear some of my fill-in shows because I had those opportunities for uh, some of the hosts there. And, of course, I, he loved the fact that I was a news anchor. That thrilled him to death. Uh, but, uh, when I got the opportunity to do the talk show, it was, it, I actually left my own business. I had left, uh, I was out of television about a year at that point in time. I had finally just given up. I needed to get out because the news business was starting to grind into me a little bit harder than what it usually is. I was letting things get to me. And so I made a big leap of faith because a lot of folks were telling me, Hey, and encouraging me that, hey, you need to go freelance. You can do this. There's plenty of work out there. There's plenty of writing opportunities. You're a great, solid writer. Go and and do your own thing. And so I, when I got that opportunity, I, I took it, and, and I started a business at the wrong month to start a business, which is the month of December. 
so it was a little scary there at first trying to figure out how to go. But, I, you know, I figured out the way. And after a couple of months, uh, things started really turning around and the business was really growing. So that first year, I, I managed to turn things around and business started finding me. And that's when the offer came down to do uh, the radio show. And I was going to expand my business. I was actually going to start leasing an office. I was going to have a, a brick and mortar type presence and things were going that, that direction. And I made the decision that I was going to kind of shutter my business, my freelance business, and go ahead and go back on the radio and do this show that I've always wanted to do. And so getting the opportunity to do that was fantastic. We were seeing a lot of success. We were there about a year and a half until the unfortunate layoffs. Uh, there was an announcement with iHeartRadio that uh, they were uh, having problems with debt, which is a very public thing that they've had to go through. And unfortunately, is is what happens in this business that I've you know I've been laid off before. I, I, I'm fond of telling one of my stories is that uh, I've actually been laid off by Disney and literally replaced by Goofy. And that happened in Kansas City at a radio station I worked at. We were a business news station, and literally, I was off the air one. Uh, I was on the air my last day. The next day, it was Radio Disney, and, and Goofy had replaced me. Wow, <laughs> that that's an interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> So, All right. I mean, uh, so yeah, it, that kind of it stuck. It stuck. Uh, what was really great is that Todd Tucker over at KOKC, he uh, is program director over there. Uh, he, he was a guy that I interned for. Uh, it was my very first internship in radio, uh, twenty six years ago, and uh, he was the very first phone call uh, when it was made public that I had lost the job over at KTOK. And uh, said, I really want to work with you and stuff like that. So I, I made appearances on his show on a regular basis and things like that. And then uh, it was a very exciting time when I got offered uh, afternoons and paired up with Chad Alexander. I loved that opportunity. And uh, like I said, it was just a, you know, it was management decision. It was something that they decided that they wanted to go in a different direction. And I completely understand. And I uh, wish everybody well over there at KOKC because that's I, I'm really kind of emphasizing a lot of local stuff lately simply because I'm getting ready to do a lot of that local stuff. So I've taken that freelance business and decided, you know, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to create a, a show when we get put together. It'll... My son was in the army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 
Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All right, folks, welcome back. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robson. We're live right now on KLRMRadio.com. Realized I haven't done this yet, so let's do this real quick. Want to give a quick shout out to the affiliates. This show is also available. Of course, we're on the home station Tuesday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Available on AMFM247.com every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Available on the Lanterns Radio Network every Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern. Available on Talk America Radio Network, the Liberty Channel, every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern. And available at amfm 247 com Saturday and Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, 7 Pacific. Yes, my name is Rick. I am a podcastaholic. It's been forever since I've been to a meeting. All right, so welcome back. This is Rick Robinson, and I have my guest with me this evening, Mr. Jason Doyle, who's actually about to kick off a podcast of his own. So let's get back to le- listening to him talk about that. Yeah, well, thank you very much. First of all, once again, thank you so much, and uh, I love the opportunity to share your audience with you. And uh, I would encourage everybody to kind of look out for uh, the Shot of JD uh, podcast. Of course, Shot of JD was the hashtag that got started with some of my radio stuff. And uh, that's kind of what I thought, well, this would be a really good opportunity to name the podcast that, something that's familiar from the radio side of things, and uh, be able to do something. And what I'd really like to do is focus on an Oklahoma, Oklahoma City-centric type podcast. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to do, like I said, it's going to be once a week, so there's not going to be a lot of breaking news I can really handle, but it'll be along the lines of coming on, uh, doing kind of a, a Johnny Carson type, uh, monologue coming in. Then we start our quote unquote newscast. We call it, uh, in the, in case you missed it newscast, and it kind of reviews the last week's news and kind of, I don't want to say, uh, it has a Paul Harvey tent because Paul Harvey was a complete different creature, but it does have that news and comment type uh, thing with a bit of comedy included. Uh, then we'll also uh, feature what we call the uh, conversations on location. And uh, that's where I actually, because I don't have a full fledged studio and I still want to talk to people and let people get to know uh, all these wonderful folks here in Oklahoma and what they have to offer. Um, I'm going to do a interview on location and integrate that into the show. And then, of course, uh, wrap things up with uh, the Geek Talk. There was a lot I, – I specialize in the Geek Talk. I love the, the comic book movies and anything with big explosions and pew, pew, pew and uh, spaceships and things like that. I get all into the sci-fi stuff, and and uh, so that's – we'll kind of do one of those pop culture – uh, geek talk type things uh, toward the end of the uh, podcast to just satisfy the geeks too. Well, I have to admit, geek talk is one of my favorite things, except Game of Thrones, only because I don't want to pay for HBO. <laughs> <laughs> well, Game of Thrones is fantastic, and I would uh, recommend if you get the opportunity uh, by the DVDs or the Blu-rays, they're out. And uh, that, in fact, that's how I got started with Game of Thrones is at the legendary pawn shop where I worked in the morning. Uh, we the community season, and that's uh, that's the reason why we have a HBO subscription today. We want to stay up to date with that particular show. Yeah, I mean, see, the thing about it is, most everything else that comes out on you know like HBO or you know a lot of their stuff, like my wife is like a big um, 
Orange is the New Black fan, but we can get that through Netflix. I can't. I can't find anywhere well, without violating some sort of law to be able to get Game of Thrones, and I don't want to be the guy who's like, oh, "I'm going to break copyright law to get to watch this." No, no. I'll, I'll give you my HBO Go sign in later. <laughs> you know, speaking of that, you know, not to go off topic for a second, but I actually, I, I, I read somewhere, and it's been probably about a year or so ago. That, you know, Netflix was one of these places where they really don't care if you give out your passwords and stuff, but that there was like some sort of a congressman or something that was going to try to make it a crime to give out your Netflix sign in. I'm like, why, if the company doesn't care, should you give a crap? But whatever. <laughs> right, right. Well, actually, the and here's here's what I guess that particular lawmaker didn't know is that Netflix actually has a way of controlling that because your subscription is based on how many multiple sign-ins you can have in one place. So if you're giving everybody else your Netflix account number, you're going to end up seeing your subscription rates go up because you're signing in on more approved devices at the same time. And that's where Netflix makes a little bit of that extra money off of those. That, because the reason why they don't care is because they're going to charge the account holder more for the more sign-ins. Ah, see, I wasn't. I don't think I've. I think we're allowed to have uh, Netflix on up to four devices. I don't think we ever really exceed that. But I right. it, your, I, your IP address also plays a little bit into that. Uh, if it shows that you're, you know, you may have four or five different devices in your house, but if it all comes through the same IP address, then they 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 recognize. Oh, okay. Well, it's the same family. Ah, interesting. That's that's that's, that's good to know. That's the problem with being a software geek too. <laughs> Hey, there, there's nothing wrong with being a geek um, of any kind because geeks are who usually get things. I mean, I, I come from a long line of geeks. I actually have a uh, degree in IT um, along with a few other hats that I've worn throughout the years. So I'm for, pretty familiar with being a geek myself. Um, but, yeah, so uh, so before we get into anything else, it is the bottom of the hour, so we've got to take another really quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion with Jason Doyle. Um, that is, of course, assuming you would like to stay on, sir. I'm on for the full hour. Let's go. Let's have fun. All right. Just wanted to make sure. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. You're out here acting so tough, and now I'm calling you bluff. Black hoods in the face. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$3 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All right, folks, we are back. We are live. We're into the bottom half of the show, and we're going to continue talking with Jason Doyle, uh, my guest here for the evening, who's been talking about his upcoming project, Shot of JD, which will actually be an Oklahoma-centric podcast, which is honestly something that I've been kind of toying with. Um, I got into this kind of doing the national level thing, because at the internet level, it's kind of one of those things where you kind of get to pull an audience from everywhere. But now that I've done it for a while, one of the things that I've figured out now that I'm getting more involved in politics is local politics is where you can really make a difference. And local conversations are kind of things that we really need to have. And, you know, not everybody's doing it, in my opinion, the right way. Um, So I have extended an offer to him. We won't go into that because he hasn't told me one way or the other. And I don't want him to tell me no on live radio. But anyway, um, so we're actually going to table politics for the night because I I don't really have it in me um, to do that for the next 40 minutes because I do it nine times a week but because i do have a fellow geek on the the show with me we've actually been talking about comic book stuff i'm gonna throw him a bit of a curveball though um because since i've actually seen it since the last time you talked about it i want to get your take on the new star wars movie because i've heard some negatives i've heard some positives and i actually really really liked it so i want to find out if if you felt the same way because i really enjoyed it i've seen it now three times i don't know why i didn't like it I I really liked it because I think it's the most strikingly visual of all the Star Wars movies. Star Wars movies. It uh, excited me visually. The throne room for uh, Snoke is probably so reminiscent of the old, big, grand Technicolor movies back in the uh, 40s and 50s when color was splashing on the big screen for the first time. And I, there was just that feel that throwback to the old way of having these big grand sets and having a, basically a stage play unfold in front of you. So my favorite part of it was the Snoke throne room. I, that was that was my favorite part of the whole movie uh, because it just caught me and I was it, I got so into it and it, the lightsaber battles were – fantastic and you had different styles of combat that were going on at the same time and it was just it and it was such a shocking moment uh, because we knew at that point in time we weren't going to get certain answers that we were wanting in the force awakens and it was just, it was just exciting for me the overall I really understand the story. It felt like a a handoff, a definite handoff. It says, listen, we're done with the old school stuff. Those guys, those characters, we paid tribute to them. And now we're going to take the saga in a different direction. And I think what that means, we're going to find out that, you know, that maybe you can redeem a soul uh, if his name is Skywalker before they uh, blow up a Death Star or something like that. (laughs) Uh, 
I really, I, I mean, I kind of got a feeling that we're going to have that feeling of hope as we leave that Skywalker saga. And I think that's what's getting ready to happen. We're getting ready to leave the Skywalker family behind and get to explore these other segments of Star Wars. Um, and I, I do have to say I'm remiss now that you bring Star Wars up. Uh, this, the Solo movie, Han Solo, is coming out. It's the first time – and this is why it's throwing me off. It's the first time we're going to have two Star Wars movies hitting the screens within a year of each other. Uh, it never happened before. Likely won't happen again because the way they've started scheduling everything back out uh, for shooting purposes – uh, and also with the announcement of uh, Ryan Johnson uh, getting the new saga, wherever di- whatever direction that's going to go. But uh, he's going to get a trilogy and a shot at telling a different type of story. And I think this kind of sets the stage for his type of storytelling. It It's a story that really shows that, you know, whatever your preconceptions are, we can blow those away because we are, we're going to move forward. We're going to... We pay respect and everything's great from the past and we love the past, but looking forward, we're going to have so many new adventures with these great characters that are going to be developed. And I I don't know. I loved I, – I really did love The the Last Jedi. I, I, I don't know where to place it really in my pantheon of, of Star Wars movies um, because now I know it's ahead of all the prequels. I'll get that right there. Oh yeah, that's but I'm a given. Try- <laughs> I'm I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to put it ahead of Return of the Jedi or not. Uh, it's it's very hard for me to break the top three with, the, of course, the the uh, original three uh, Star Wars movies. So I I like where the story is going. I want to see how they're going to tie up the Leia with the uh, death of Carrie Fisher. Um, I, 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 more than likely with J.J. Abrams taking back over uh, the director's seat for the next movie, I, I think we'll get a very sweet tribute uh, for her somehow, some way, and I think it'll be a tearjerker if we know J.J. Abrams like we know J.J. Abrams. Um, I'm just, I'm just glad that uh, he didn't pull a con on us with, like he did with the Star Trek in your pro- uh, franchise. Yeah. I only have one thing to say about J.J. Abrams coming back. Can you lay off the lens flare? Hashtag asking for a friend. God, that stuff <laughs> did you notice, me. Did you notice that uh, the first of the uh, the Last Jedi, they, he put a lens flare in? I know. Ryan I, think, Johnson, I, I think he yeah, did. Ryan Johnson put an intentional lens flare to play tribute to uh, uh, to J.J. Abrams' style. Yeah, I mean, you know, and occasionally, you know, it, it serves a purpose once in a while. But with every scene, I mean, I, I like J.J. Abrams. Don't get me wrong. He's done lots of things that I really, really like. I actually am a fan of the reboots for Star Trek for the most part um, I, because I think it was a great way for them to move into a brand new direction. Unlike Enterprise, where they basically started screwing with the original timeline and everybody got up in arms. Um, so I think honestly, they, they did that in a really smart way. And I, I, I was kind of out on a limb with that stuff when it first came out, cause everybody was telling me how much it sucked. And I'm like, you don't understand. This gives them the ability. They have a blank canvas. Now they can basically do whatever they want because this is now an alternate timeline. And we don't necessarily know exactly how this is going to unfold because it's all different. And everybody's like, Oh, I never thought of that. And I'm like, yeah, see, it's not yeah, like it. See, I'm, I'm on the same page with you there with the original Star Trek. But when it came to Into uh, Into Darkness, that upset me. That got me very, very upset because I had an emotional connection to Wrath of Khan. When I was a kid, I that was – by all means, that's the standard of Star Trek movies. And for him to play, play into – needing to do fan service or having that feel, feeling of doing fan service. The great thing about fans is that that's why we want you to be different so we can have these debates amongst ourselves. Put up whatever art you want to do, but don't pay us fan service uh, uh, because then we can see it. And that's exactly what Into Darkness was, was just fan service because he wanted to have a big name actor up there playing the role of a well-known villain in the Star Trek franchise and trying to hit that second feeling that that second uh, Star Trek has for so many fans out there and just missing the mark and kind of ruining the experience. If John Harrison, for me, if John Harrison had stayed John Harrison instead of being revealed as uh, Khan, 
I would have enjoyed the movie more, but it took me out because I was so entrenched in the old uh, Star Trek franchise and loved Wrath of Khan so much that it just I couldn't see Cumberbatch as Khan. Yeah, I mean, I liked it to a point, but I will tell you that, I mean, it hit a few raw nerves for me, too, because honestly, I'm going to go out on a limb. When that happened, I when I, I saw uh, Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan in my local neighborhood movie theater, um, it was the Apollo, the Twin Apollo Theaters right there off of 15th and uh, Air Depot in Midwest City, because that's the town that I was born in. Um, that was actually the first movie that I can remember crying in. Just to put myself out there, um, because I was that invested in the character of Spock, and it, it was just—it was one of those things where I was like, I cannot believe they've killed off one of my favorite characters of this show series of all time, and I was like mad for weeks, dude. I'm not even—it was just—it's—it's <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I had almost the exact same response, except for we were at the drive-through in Oklahoma City. Or the drive-in, we were at the uh, Winchester Drive-In, which is a famous southwest Oklahoma City drive-in uh, on Southwestern. And uh, my parents, of course, they they always took me to the movies. I love the big sci-fi movies. My dad would always take us. And so it was just kind of a deal because it was obviously at the Winchester. You got at least a double feature out of the deal. And so we were watching uh, uh, Star Trek, which is the movie that I was all into. And then after that was 9 to 5. So the death scene comes, and I just start wailing. And I mean, people are shouting back to my parents, shut him up, shut him up. And I'm just, I can't believe they killed Spock. And so it was fun. It was great because my mom, the way she got me to stop crying and stop wailing was, hey, we're about to get a comedy at uh, 9 to 5. That Lily Tomlin, she cracks me up. So... Uh, it was Lily Tomlin and uh, and uh, 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 Darling Parton and all that uh, Jane Fonda that all cracked me up and helped me uh, get over my sadness that Spock was dead. The funny thing is, and this just shows how Trek fans are kind of a generational thing. So my oldest daughter, who was probably five or six at the time, was at the movie theater with me and my first wife, and we were watching Generations. Which is the the uh, the movie for those of you living under a rock where the original Enterprise D explodes. So as it's crashing, my oldest daughter jumps up in the movie theater seat and yells "No!" as loud as she can. I'm like, "Yep, that's my daughter. I can't deny it." <laughs> <laughs> I you know I raised my uh, my little girl on Star Wars. Uh, we did. I, I showed her the original trilogy. This is as the. Uh, the prequels were getting ready to come out. George Lucas, obviously, still in control. And The Phantom Menace was coming out. And I, I found out about it, and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to get my little girl hooked. And one of my favorite experiences of all time was when Phantom Menace uh, came out. We were sitting in uh, the movie theater together, and it was both of us. We were all excited, and both of us were just being kids. And as soon as that Lucasfilm uh, uh, logo went up and then you heard John Williams first uh, tones of Star Wars uh, and his music that's just so identifiable with franchise and then you say uh, you know a long time ago in a galaxy far far away and it's just it's something magical about that and I know a lot of people knock on the prequels and things like that but at that time during those years it gave my daughter and I a lot of time to share something we both liked uh, I got to see Jar Jar Binks through her eyes as opposed to the rest of the country's eyes. So I didn't hate on Jar Jar Binks as much because I liked him. And, you know, the same argument can be used that that's what the Ewoks really were for our generation, the original Star Wars generation. Uh, and I think the Porgs are going to be that way for this new generation of Star Wars fans who are uh, up and coming and getting to dis- uh, discover a great saga and a lot of great storytelling. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, for the most part, I mean, if you look at, if you look at the stories as a whole, my biggest thing with the issues was the fact that the the story went in a completely different direction than you expected. Because one of the things, as being an avid George Lucas fan, he sold everybody on the idea that he already had all this stuff all mapped out and he knew everything that was going to happen. But the best way to do it was to start in the middle and then go backwards. 
But then he started doing things that were completely different than what he told everybody else he was going to do when he started doing the prequels, and you realize that he was basically just kind of blowing smoke. And it, 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 they, they were still fun. They were great. It, um, the same thing for me. I got to watch them with my children. I got to see it through their eyes, which which is a, an amazing thing. And, you know, my children, believe it or not, are all pretty much adults now, so that's that's time that I, that I really cherish. So, I mean, that's what made the prequels fun for me was seeing them – with my children and seeing things through their eyes. But, you know, if I, and going back to what you'd said a minute ago, if I have to rate them, I have to say uh, four, five, and six, probably in that, actually, probably five, six, four, to be honest, because I was pretty young when four came out. So I, uh, five was one of the first ones I actually remember seeing in the movie theater. So probably five, six, and then four. Um, and then I'm probably going to have to go. Eight, seven, and then one through three in no particular order because meh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I'm Empire's first for me. A New Hope is second, um, and this is where I start getting into a sticky wicket because Return of the Jedi is third place. Rogue One is third part two. It's tied for third. I, oh, I didn't love even Rogue, Rogue One. one. I- I, I actually didn't even think about that. I was just kind of the ones. I really, really enjoyed that one, but somehow, and I don't know if it's just because I'm one of these guys where movies are supposed to have happy endings, I had blocked out the fact that they were all going to die at the end, and I was like, oh my god, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it'll tell you what mentality I've got, because I do like it when people all die at the end. It's just, because it just means that either it's going to be the story to... I don't know. I just like the fact that they made it a tidy little package. That they weren't going to try to sneak it in to a lot. It just fit into that empty hole, that one sentence in the uh, in A New Hope where uh, the spies grabbed the uh, plans. And uh, it was such a great story. It was, it was something to behold the CGI that brought uh, Grand Moff Tarkin back to life. They did a really uh, good job with that. Really did. They did. Excellent job with that. And then, of course, that's Lucasfilm. I mean, that's that's just – that's that's the expectation you have with Lucasfilm is to be able to continue to push the effects uh, threshold as, as much as possible. That's how Star Wars started. It's how this whole genre of space opera movies and sci-fi really got a legitimate footing because before Star Wars, pretty much all sci-fi films, you could see the strings uh, on the spaceships – in the uh, black curtain background with the holes punched with the light shining out from behind it. Uh, (laughs) Star Wars is a completely different visual feel, and while some of the effects are finally starting to show their age, it still holds up so well against a lot of what we have seen. And that's 40 years later. I mean, this this thing has been around for nearly 40 years, and or it has been around for 40 years. And we've, I mean... It, it, it's. I really enjoyed that whole thing where they plugged it in, told a really great story with Rogue One, and showed me a lot more Darth Vader. I'm a big Darth Vader. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I love Darth Vader. I that's, the why, that's the reason why the Revenge of the Sith, I was really, really hoping for his transformation a lot earlier in the film. Uh, the whole, no! It, you know, they actually explained it away in the really excellent Darth Vader comic books, uh, but that whole... No thing uh, when he finds that Padme is dead was kind of it, – it was a little bit – that's what kind of made – I don't know. I actually liked uh, – I actually like Revenge of the Sith. It was uh, – it, it felt like that Darth Vader story. I just had a problem with the actor playing Anakin Skywalker because uh, Hayden Christensen just – it just wasn't doing it for me. It, he sounded hard, whiny man. and sniveling and instead of this big great hero – that uh, somehow turned evil, and it just—that's. I think that's one of the reasons why I had a problem with the prequels. It wasn't so much that the storyline was a little bit different or anything like that. That what we thought. Uh, in fact, I really loved the Obi Wan ca- uh, character through the prequels. That obviously that was my favorite part of the the three for, uh, prequels. But uh, yeah, I just. I don't know. I like my Darth Vader mean. I like my Darth Vader to where he's so intimidating that people just are scared and that demonstration of how much power he has. That's that's what I really look for in my Darth Vader. Yeah, I have to tell you, Hayden Christensen kind of killed that for me. There's no way this guy here. I mean, is he going to, like, walk off to the Death Star uh, canteen and get a latte or what? Because, yeah, that was just kind of weird. Um, but, you know, uh, but, I mean... 
I don't, I, but to me, Star Wars has always been a huge deal, and I think that's why, even though I wasn't a huge fan of the prequels, I still really enjoyed them because it was just it was more time with the story. And I think even though I was kind of disappointed with seven to a point because it seemed like it was kind of a revamp of Episode Four on steroids, I still really enjoyed it though. Um, and it's it, again just because you know it's Star Wars overall. But believe it or not, we have just about hit that time where we have got to say good night. Um, why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you, especially since you're about to start pushing your own stuff. So why don't you give out your social medias on the way out the door? Not a problem. Uh, over on Facebook, you can catch me at Jason Doyle Radio. Uh, on uh, the uh, Twitter, it's at Jason Doyle. Uh, Jason Doyle OKC for Instagram if you're more pi- pictorial. And then uh, coming soon, JasonDoyleMedia.com, and that's where you'll, where you'll be able to find the Shot of JD podcast and a lot of other cool stuff as the website develops. So hope you'll join me over there. And, of course, uh, thank you so much, Rick, for having me on your uh, podcast. I re- I've really enjoyed our conversation. I hope to get to do it again sometime soon. You are welcome back anytime. And for those of you that are trying to diet, don't go to his ins. He puts out lots of pictures about food that he's cooking, and it makes you wish you could get an invite. But anyway, that is going to do it for this particular episode, folks. Stay tuned here in just a second. I'll be putting, uh, taking off the host hat, putting on the producer hat, and we'll have conservative curmudgeon radio show coming up here in just a couple minutes. I'll be back with you guys tomorrow night for a double shot first on America Off the Rails and on Jen and Rick. Stay tuned. Water.